Okay, today we're doing chimichangas. As you can see, I've got uh, all the ingredients laid out here for you. And if I've forgotten something, well, you'll see that add in the video as we go along. What I'm using for the meat is marinated chuck roll. Okay, I got this here from El Mexicana Market, and I got some chorizo. Okay, right here, the chorizo cost me about four bucks. And uh, let's see, it's about uh, a little over a pound. And the chuck roll is uh, two pounds, and that cost me about eight bucks. Now, I'll be able to make some smoke and large chimichangas out of this stuff. So, well, we've got cilantro, onions. You can see I've got the peppers. Um, I won't be using all of that just for color purposes, so you'll see it pop when I cut that sucker open. I've got some toppings, the sour cream and the green enchilada sauce. I'll probably throw some lettuce in there and whatnot, too. But anyway, as far as the meat goes, we'll just be going the steak, the chorizo, and then these uh, ingredients here with the, the herbs. So what we've got here is some Goya all-purpose seasoning, which is pretty much garlic salt. I use raw garlic as well, just some chopped garlic. I've got cumin and I've got uh, chili powder. Okay, now these are huge chimichangas that I'm making, and it takes a ginormous tortilla like this to roll them up, just like you see in the restaurants when you get that huge burrito or the huge chimichanga when you get served at the restaurant. This is what they use, and it's a really fresh tortilla. It's very thin, very doughy. Almost like it's not cooked, but it has been. But I'm telling you, the performance on the chimichanga that way is fantastic. And then, of course, right here, we'll be frying it as soon as we get it all put together. So, heat on this, just in case I miss it later, 375 on your temperature. Okay, now let's go to the stove. Okay, now here we are at the stove. As you can see, I've prepared a bunch of stuff here as far as the green-wise. I chopped up the orange bell pepper and... Uh, threw in a jalapeno and some scallions. Here I've got the cilantro, got the lime ready to go, and of course the beef chuck all chopped up and ready to go here too. Now the pan's already hot, I got it on medium. We're gonna do a little bit of this oil, I like to use peanut. And we're gonna take this chuck and we're gonna throw it right on in there and get it going. We're gonna cook this by itself here for a, a little bit. And then we'll add the chorizo. Now, as you can see, the chorizo back here is all coiled up. I want to take that out of the uh, foil there and just add the meat only. So I'll be separating that in between videos here. And I'll cook this until it's brown. Okay, now as you can see, we got a nice brown color. You can see it uh, got a little bit of royal roll in the, uh, the moisture in here. But I'm going to leave that. I don't want to strain it because it'll just it'll reduce. It'll cook out, okay? I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, teaspoon of, of uh, chopped garlic and put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and use the Goya uh, all-purpose seasoning and just do a good shake here. This is going to take the place of actual salt. And then here's the tree. So now I'm not using that whole coil. This is about a pound. Okay, it's a pound to two pounds of beef. And all you got to do is just chop this up in here real good. And then once you do that, and spread it around. You can season it with the cumin, the chili powder, and we'll start throwing in the veggies because we want to keep the veggies and their nutrients. We don't want to cook it all out. That's why we didn't throw it in yet. We're going to wait till all this is cooked out and then we'll add all that as well. Okay, now at this point you can see I've got it all incorporated. It's perfect. You want to give it a taste right now, see if you need to add any more of this uh, all purpose seasoning here, this garlic salt. And then you can uh, throw in a shake of your chili powder here. And it really is only about a teaspoon's worth, if that. The cumin, same thing. Throw in your cumin, however your taste buds feel they, they need it. I do about a teaspoon's worth of this for this much meat, for two pounds of it. And with the, you know, of course with the... Uh, uh, chorizo adds another pound, so three pounds of meat in this skillet. So a teaspoon of that that uh, cumin really isn't that much, especially since I get it up here from the El Mexicano market, and uh, it seems to be a little bit less flavored when it, when I get it in bulk like that, because I get a I get a big pound bag of it for 
five dollars versus when you buy this, you know, just like at Walmart or something. I just refill this. This is like three fifty, so it's a killer deal. But I find that I have to use a little bit more. So now that we've we're stirring this in, we are going to add the veggies. Okay, right here. I told you I've got the bell pepper, the jalapeno, and the uh, scallions, and the cilantro. We'll do here in a second. Okay. I want that last because I don't want that to be just this mush killed weed in there. So we'll get this churning in there. And then guess what else? Let's try the lime. So let's squeeze the heck out of this lime. We'll get that in there real nice and good. Stir that up some more. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and kill the heat. And uh, add the cilantro. And give it another good stir. Okay, now as you can see, it's good to go. It's settled down. It's not as hot as it was. It's ready to just start loading, okay? Now let's go talk about that. Okay, now we're down to rolling it. We're going to stuff it and roll it. But I want to talk about these tortillas. It really is important that you understand. You can see the size of this tortilla and the size of my hand. They're ginormous. They're very thin. Okay, and I can only find these where I'm at anyway. I'm up in the mountain region, so it's hard to find more of an authentic tortilla like this that's more restaurant style. Um, but I go to the uh, Mexican market to find them. I can't get them at Walmart or regular grocery stores around here. They're not like this. They ain't the same doughy quality to it, okay? But uh, it's real important if you can get these to get them because it makes all the difference in the world in your, your chimichanga, okay? And another thing that you want to do when you're filling these up is sometimes you want to use some rice. It helps as a good filler so you don't have to use so much meat and the meat can go further and you can make more chimichangas for everybody else that's on your uh, to feed list so sometimes I, I throw in this Spanish rice across the bottom then I'll take the meat right there in the center and right here I've got uh, this is my favorite cheese I like to use the pepper jack I'll put the pepper jack cheese in there As you can see, I'm not scared to use it sparingly. And then we're going to roll that, but I need two hands to do it, so watch this. Okay, now the rolling is uh, kind of particular because we want to keep the grease out of the inside of this when we fry it. So you want to have it completely enclosed. You don't start at the sides or anything like that. Just grab the back side, go over the top, and then you can kind of snug it up by pulling it back here. Secure your loose ends here. You're going to start a half tuck here and another one two and three times on each side. One, two, three, and then roll. That's it. Now, on the other side, all we do here is I take a toothpick. I don't know any other way to do it when they're this big. I stab it in there, come back out like I'm threading it and that'll hold it, that'll secure it, and then we'll just throw that right in the fryer. Now here we go, this is my fryer. I've got an old school fryer right here, I don't know if you can see it, if it's clear enough. I've got it set at 375 for the frying, okay? It's already heated, ready to go. Now it's really important that it is absolutely heated. Just test it out with a small piece of tortilla and make sure that it's bubbling and sizzling up and it's ready to just go, okay? Most likely you already know that, but if you don't, if your temperature is not the right heat, you're not going to get this crispy enough, fast enough, and it's going to be soggy, and it's going to taste like it's full of oil, and that just sucks. So, we'll just drop that sucker right in there, and I'm going to throw the lid on there because I don't like my house to smell like this oil. But it also helps the heat condense in there and really crisp that thing up. This will only just take a couple minutes. All right, it is ready. It only took a few minutes. I'm going to let that drip dry here. Uh, right here, we're going to go ahead and plate it. And there you have it right there. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pull out the uh, toothpick. Slides right out. Easy as, easy as pie. 
course, we're making chimichangas, though, aren't we? <laughs> okay, so um, I like this uh, green chili enchilada sauce, and we'll just pour that right down the top here. As much as you want. Don't be scared. And then uh, I'm going to grab myself a uh, big old spoonful of sour cream. And there you have it, chimichanga right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen.